it's worth saying with mitochondrial function, we can test it relatively easily with a blood test. And, you know, that then informs, you know, we d and we should just say this also with, with uh, the adrenals, that there are certain protocols that we would then use to address that. And obviously that's dependent upon someone's results and, and their own kind of um, uh, history. But maybe just say a few generic words around how we would go about that. Yeah, so for mitochondria, you know, there are some very specific supplements that we know of. Um, but, you know, there are different supplements for different stages. So if someone's having difficulty making energy from scratch from their food, we'll use one type of set of supplements versus someone who's perhaps got more of a problem with the recycling. Um, but there's also dietary things. You know, we know, you know, there are certain nutrients that are found in certain foods. So for people who are happy to, we might suggest more organ meat, for instance, because that's very rich in mitochondrial nutrients. Um, so that could be an, an area that we'd go through through diet. Or we might notice that people are getting a little bit more damaged because making energy, it's like having a bonfire. You create smoke, and that smoke's quite harmful. So we need antioxidants. So more plant food, again, more vegetables, more fruit. So from a dietary approach, that might be what we suggest. So we've got supplements, we've got diets, and then we've got lifestyle. What we often look at is a particular marker that will tell us if someone is pushing through and doing too much, um, or actually in some cases, particularly towards the end of recovery, sometimes people aren't doing enough. So we've got, there's a great marker, which is just looking at um, free, cell-free DNA in the blood, which gives us an idea as to people are pushing through or not. And so that's a whole lifestyle approach around pacing and activity levels. So from the mitochondria point of view, we've got a whole range of things we would do. And the same for the adrenals as well. There are specific foods that are rich in certain nutrients that are going to nourish the adrenals. There are then supplements, which if you've got high cortisol, will bring it down. If you've got low cortisol, will bring it up. Or if you've got the right amount, but it's just in all the wrong places, will modulate it. And again, lifestyle. So that, this is where we would work very closely with the psychology team um, about managing the emotional stress, but also from our point of view, managing the physical stress by managing the diet, optimizing the diet, that also reduces the stress. Mm -hmm.